Okay. We gotta run away from mutated Agent Liev. That is where we are. I did that guy a favor. Everything else in here is toast. I'm gonna ride the shotgun here as we come down the hallway. Damn it, this thing's unstoppable. I gotta get out of here immediately. X triangle, X triangle, circle, square. Hit the button, bro. Okay, I don't know how that just happened, but okay. Okay. So we know there's Desert Eagle rounds at the end here. I need to free up inventory space, so we're going to drop that. My man just wants a sandwich. Damn it, this thing's That's all he wants. I gotta get out of here immediately. He's actually want to kill us. Despite everything he said when we were in the helicopter, which seemed like years ago at this point. Or does he? Is there any humanity left inside this mutated shell that he has now become? One, two, six is down right there, and the third one is right here. Boom. Now we have to wait for the elevator, grab these Desert Eagle rounds, and reload. So we want to rope a dope them right here. Kind of lure him over this way. And then make a mad dash. Use all that stamina. I'm taking you all the way over here, bro. We're getting all the distance. And twice. Elevator is now arriving. I really appreciate the cutscene just slowing my ass down. Like, no, no, you didn't want to sprint, did you? I 
have no stamina left. This is nerve wracking. Just clicking that stick. See ya. Bye bye. After narrowly surviving his last confrontation with the monster who is once Special Agent Liev, Raven finally reaches the rooftop of the dam where he prepares to contact Sandman. Once the self-destruct device is initiated, I love it. It would not be a love letter to Resident Evil without a self-destruct sequence. He won't have long before the entire edifice explodes into a thousand pieces. A thousand, maybe a million, to be honest. Contact Sandman. All right. Zero out of zero. There are no more bobbleheads to be found. Major, I'm on the roof of the dam. The Citadel's been overrun. I repeat, the Citadel's been overrun. The whole situation's foobar. Uh huh. We I'm overhear surprised. this conversation as Samuel. Hold on. What? Again. I mean, you just have to be kidding me that I'm fighting this son of a bitch again. Not where you want to be. That's fine. Heal me up. We gotta wait until the health goes all the way. Gonna be at 140, 140%, before we proceed. There's that. at the skip the cutscene moment. I'm giving this a, a couple, and by a couple I mean numerous attempts. It ain't easy. Come on, Let's see if we can get both here. What? I mean, 
pick it up. Mashing the goddamn X uh, square button. Okay, that should give me enough time to grab the mag or two. See him coming. Reload. This car is my favorite, like, safe spot. around get more mags you know plus the obvious red tint on the screen Go faster. Go back to that car. This, this is the move. Yep. Get pissed. I got. Whatever, I'm just gonna keep going. Desperately need desert eagle ammo. Let's take him back to the car. Jesus ass. Fuck it. Yes. Thank you. It's enough of your shit. Can we set that thing on fire? Can we just burn it? Nice one, kid. You already put that shit hawk in a fucking coma. Major! <laughs> Look who it is. Major. That's hard to believe. I didn't think Leave could get any nastier than he already was. Come on. We need to get out of here. The dam's gonna blow. Right. We better hurry. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh no. You have to be kidding me. Get out of here. I won't leave another man behind. No, Memphis. Motherfucker. Not today, kid. Not today. You've already risked your life far too many times. This time. Okay, Sandman's off of his impalement and ready to go toe to toe. Do I get to go into like an actual like fighting game right here and just take the it? The truth toe? is undeniable. Fortune oh, wow. favors the bold. No way. I accomplished my mission at the first light of dawn, and for once in my existence, the best plan was to not have a plan. How did it go down? That's the question. Aiden! How the hell did you... Where? So what about Samuel? Sorry to disappoint you, kid. I figured that's how this game was gonna end. Yes, the great Sandman ain't so great after all. But after all of the lies lost, at least I managed to save one. What's going on? By all rights, you should be dead. And you're not. Wait. What? Who always did that to you. That fucking guy! He's up. Don't touch me. Stay away. Leave. He turned me into this freak. The antidote. I need it now. This? Give it to me now! Oh, wow. Are you alright? Did it work? Give him a minute. <laughs> you bastard! Aw, oh, here we go. You remember me? You... You mass-murdering piece of shit! Yes! I will never forgive you for taking her away from me! What? Who the hell are you? Drop your gun right now! You fucker! You killed her. Why? What did my baby ever do to you? Hey, whoa, whoa, calm down. Too many people have died already. No, no, not enough. You drop the weapon so we can talk about it. Whatever happened, it's over. It's over. No, it's not over. Not by a long shot. Not until this. <laughs> He's unstable this right now. He's unhinged. What he did to her. Listen, listen. I don't know you, sir. But you can trust me when I say, the man who did all this is dead. The Major's a hero. He risked his life. He risked his life? Huh? For what? To murder tens of people? Including my wife? I think it's time to come well, clean, I was Sandman. There, soldier boy. I saw what he did to her. My baby. Now, I suggest you get the fuck out of my way, or you can go to hell with them! I'm not gonna tell you again, sir. Drop your weapon, or I'm gonna shoot you where you stand. No matter what you think you saw. Stand down, Raven. What? Stand down. It's you, isn't it? Samuel. Oh, shit. How do you know my name? Because I know more than what you think. But the only thing you really need to know is that I'm truly sorry. I never meant to hurt her. Not intentionally. Your wife, she was one of the few people I could really count on to. What's that supposed to mean, huh? Huh? Uh oh. Who are you people? Come on. He's the one who ripped my arm off and broke my neck, baby. While you just stood by and watched me die. Oh boy. No, that's not what happened. The daymare syndrome. That's not, how, that's not. She's dead! The sad baby. Are we really gonna argue over semantics? <laughs> Just look at yourself. You're nothing but a frightened lab rat. Shut up! That's all you want. Shut up! That's all you ever want. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Just shut your mouth. Samuel, I. Stop! Just don't say another goddamn word! These people know everything about you. Fight it, Samuel! They used you for their advantage. No! They this isn't them. real! You She's dead! Don't listen to her, Samuel! The moment you were born! 
Damn it! The voice isn't Sarah! There you go. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, are you kidding? Oh. So who shot who? Unbelievable. What an interesting ending. Um... A little surprised. <laughs> oh, wow, what a trip. Oh my gosh. Um, Daymare 1998. I really enjoyed it. In fact, I need to do a toast and a cheers to the developers of this game. So, one second. Enjoy the credits and the song. Okay, um, that was quite an ending, um, I really enjoyed the game, I thought it was a good uh, love letter to the survival horror genre in general, there were some, uh, very heavy on lore, I'll start there, um, very heavy on lore, the, the finding out that there was the website for those files to, uh, look them up and <laughs> and unlock more lore. I mean, we had some files that were 10 pages long, which is nuts. But, I mean, you're telling a story, so shout out to them and the writing and putting the time and the, the imagination to create what they did. Um, this came out in 2019. I'm not sure if you... Uh, realize it i know i talked about this on, a, on another one of the chapter videos but these guys uh this team was actually working on a resident evil 3 remake before capcom flew them out to osaka and you know told them in person basically like, you guys shut this down uh capcom is not really known for shutting down fan-made projects i think they love seeing uh the inspiration for one uh, that this fan base has for creating new content and kind of creating a buzz and a demand for what we want to see next. So once that happened and they were told they, you know, their Resident Evil 2 remake had to be, you know, shut down because Capcom themselves was making Resident Evil 2 remake, that then led them to create their own IP, which is the Daymare, ser Daymare series. And then we had Daymare 1998 and just this past uh, summer, I would call it summer season, um, Daymare 1994 dropped, which I haven't played yet, which I'm going to have to. Um, so it's exciting. I uh, thought that they created a cool world. I think there's a lot of cool call callbacks to the genre, to to the movies that were of the time. You know, we saw plenty of uh, <laughs> plenty of Easter eggs from the trophies to just stuff that you interacted with in the game, like posters on walls and everything else. Um, I thought that was really neat. Um, the intro to this game, I think it had a nice steady climb as far as difficulty and uh, 
what you dealt with initially compared to what you dealt with at the end. And I do think my one gripe about this game would be there, there was a couple instances, and it was really towards the very end of the game, where it just got a little chaotic with the expectations. Um, I would say that it all revolved around the last boss with Agent Liev and the shit that went on um, leading up to the final encounter. So with that being said, though, awesome game. Um, the, the absolute classic survival horror kind of locations that you went through. You know, you had your labs, you had your small little towns, like little, little city action that was very claustrophobic. You had to go down to the sewers. You always have to have a sewers area. And a lot of that, I'm sure, is uh, reused assets from the Resident Evil 2 remake. So cheers to the developer for putting all the effort in and getting a game that has a physical copy. I'm playing the PS4 version on disc on my PS5. And, you know, it's on Steam, it's on Xbox, you play it on all the different platforms. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I think that some of those puzzles were really unique. So cheers to them. We have the Whistle Pig, Piggyback, the Rye, and, uh, you know, age six years, so... This is for them and for the player and for those watching. I appreciate the love, the likes, the subscribes, the views, all of it. If you haven't already, smack that zombie face. Subscribe to, to, the, to the channel and I'll continue to bring you new content. So thank you, Invader Studios. Great product. And this is why we watch till the end. That's sad. Sam and Sarah. Is this a cutscene or am I like in first person mode right now? Oh yes. <laughs> I would have just let it sit there for a minute. No running. We are just walking. Gene signature confirmed. AI. Welcome back, sir. Boot up the register. Cleaner. Ready to receive. Mission report K731. Personal code. FG nine five six five zero six one. This is damn jellyfish again. Mission status completed. The material requested has been recovered. Of those involved, there's no one left. At least no one who knows what's really going on. I erased all traces of K's involvement. Hexacore Biogenetics will be blamed and held accountable for the mishap in Keaton's sight. Good job, sir. Access the main terminal. Who the hell is the cleaner? Oh my gosh. This is cool. Say who this is. No. All right. Um. Here we go. We're gonna access the main terminal. I'm just making sure there's nothing else. 
two green, one red. Following materials archive. Evidence number one. HAF4RG0 Delta surveillance footage. Archive evidence. No shit. So he killed the hunk looking dude, not Agent Liev. Evidence number two intercepted voice messages of Major Sandman. Intercepted voice Vulcan. messages of Major Hayden Sandman. Voice message with encryption code XDR00035. Getting some good context Sarah. here. I would have liked to speak with you in person, but I'm afraid that's just not going to happen. Wow. So this is it. The moment has arrived. You know, I told you that I'd do whatever it takes to protect her, and now i got to prove just that. Prove it to myself, to you, but mostly prove it to her, my precious little angel, Samantha. In exactly seven days, my man and I will be deployed to the Aegis Labs to recover samples of Castor and Pollux. Huh? After which, you know what I have to do. Oh, I know what you're thinking right now. I know. So many innocent lives lost to save just one. But she's my baby girl. So listen up. I want you to leave Keen Sight, you and your Samuel, and get as far away from the city as possible. The gears of destruction are already in motion, and nobody can stop them now. And even if they could, I wouldn't let them. So, if one day my conscience does feel a little less guilty, it'll only be because I've not only saved my daughter's life, but yours as well. I know you know what it means to truly love someone with every fiber of your being. And the choices you gotta make to hold on to that love, to be with that person and share one last day, one last minute, one last tantalizing second. I couldn't live with myself knowing that I didn't step up and do something, even if it means burning in hell for eternity. That should come easy compared to a living hell without her. One day you can forgive me. But if you can't, saving Samantha will be enough. Evidence number three, Sarah Carmichael's recording to Sam Walker. Here we go. So she worked for Hexacore. Samuel's wife, Sarah. Sam, sweetheart. Here we go. I've been waiting for this day to come, wishing I didn't have to tell you the, the things you're about to hear. Yet, here goes nothing. The more elaborate the lie, especially one as grandiose and brazen as this, the more difficult it becomes to explain. I should have waited for you to come home, to speak with you in person, but I just can't do anything but record this. You won't be home before dark, by which time it'll probably be too late. There's a good chance they'll come here looking for me. <laughs> they. I guess you're wondering who I'm talking about. This poor dude. What I'm about to say will change your life forever. Change my life, too. What's happening, one way or another, was inevitable, but at the cost of many thousands of lives, it will also mean the end of our relationship. Listen to me. By now, all of Keen's sight is lost. He... He did it. He infected the whole goddamn town, yep. sentencing the people here to a fate worse than death. He committed a truly unforgivable sin. The last hope for a 
crazy man being puppeted by even crazier people. The Kuronosu Company. I still don't understand how he could have done it. How anyone could have done it. Even him. Especially him. God damn you, Kuronosu. Hexacore, damn you both to hell. Just a bunch of filthy murderers. All of us. <sighs> yeah, at least you know. Listen. What I wanted to say, if I wasn't a coward, is that even though I've always loved you, I've never been completely honest with you. Well, obviously you weren't. He didn't know what the hell was going behind on. Behind your disease lies a tangled web of secrets linked to the company. I would have told you sooner rather than being obliged by this tragedy, but I couldn't and wasn't ready yet. I was afraid of how it might affect us. Sorry. 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 It kills me to tell you this, but I'm not who you think I am. You already know that I work for Hexacore, but what you don't know is that my job isn't limited to mere administration. My field of expertise is actually the supervision of research studies, monitoring one of our most important tests, you. For decades now, our government has been experimenting in its own backyard, testing chemical weapons on an unsuspecting America. The project is called Truman, and Keensight is one of the most illustrious testing zones, with Hexacore overseeing the whole shebang since the 40s. Wow. You, and hundreds of others like you, are the end result of these tests, and we've been tasked to keeping you in check and gleaning as much data as possible about your condition. I can attest, however, that it took very little effort for you to become the most important part for me because because I actually fell in love with you and it wasn't just a job for me anymore I want so that mug when someone asks if I love my work I tell them yes thanks to you I do and maybe that's why I've never had the courage to tell you before and more importantly I would never leave this place without you, of my own free will, if given the choice. Hold on. I hear something. Uh-huh. There... There's somebody out there. Sandman. Oh, nuts. I think we have one more file, I think it is. Evidence number four. ID tags of Sarah Carmichael, uh -huh. Hexacore Biogenetic Supervisor, code 27. See, I figured, you know, when we were in the hospital and they had us retrieve the chip under the, the skin, yada, yada, yada. When you're Samuel, I figured when I saw her missing, like, hand, that this had something to do with that. So... Let's see. June 20th, 1991. I finally did it. I'm finally in charge of one of the most important research studies in the country. It took years to perfect the Truman Project together with those yes men at Hexcore. Maybe longer still to convince that Washington, D.C. dinosaur Murphy to put me in charge of the whole operation. Due to their backwards way of thinking, I was either too young or too girly or too black, but in the end, they had no choice but to recognize the crowns of my achievements. In under 30 days, I'll be transferred to Keensight, and from what the company tells me, it'll be a one-way trip. And just maybe, that's what excites me the most. This is a nine-pager. Everybody hold on. January 4th, 1992. I've only been here a few months, but I think I've already, I've already tucked myself. I almost said fuck myself. I've already tucked myself snug as a bug into this rural community. Sometimes I feel a bit sorry for the people of Keensight, or maybe it'd be better to refer to them by their proper names, guinea pigs. Other times I envy them. 
They're simple small town lives filled with small town values. After all, the company ensures they're safe inside their giant petri dish, closed off from all the shit of the outside world. I like to think that I too have helped create a sort of paradise here, or perhaps another circle of hell. I'm still not sure yet. July 3rd, 1993. The most difficult part of the Truman Project is officially underway, or at least in regards to my active role in the field. All the researchers stationed here must have frequent contact with the subject in order to control it, and I'm no exception to the rule. Indeed, I'll have to lead my, by example. At any rate, tomorrow I'll meet my special to be monitored, and judging from reports, it's clear that this one will possibly be the most important part in the whole study. I'll have to be on my best behavior once again. Meanwhile, I've been scratching at my arm for days just because everyone got the same chip integrated into their arm. Doesn't mean it's a good thing. After all, we're researchers, not the guinea pigs the government is experimenting on with the program. Unfortunately, however, these are the rules of the game and I can't back out now. January 7th, 1994. Oh, Jesus, I haven't felt this good in years. The Truman Project is proceeding as planned, not to mention the experiments, too. I just can't hide my excitement thanks to the work I've been doing with my subject. That being said, this isn't exactly an official report. I could say my subject, Sam, for short, the person I've been tracking and recently approached, well, I'm starting to think something peculiar is happening. I know I shouldn't get this attached, but the company asked me to get closer, so... And the heart wants what the heart wants, right? Where's the harm in that? May 4th, 1994. With the recent transfer of high-level personnel to the new office space atop the dam... Ah, final showdown. We find ourselves butting heads with the men from Hexcore Special Units. Mind you, Hades agents look like rock-hard war machines who seldom interact with anyone outside their circle, and the HAF pilots seem to be normal kids despite the demanding task that the company often gives them. Though one in particular seems to be catching the attention of all the office ladies. His name is Hayden, though everyone's been calling him Sandman after the mishap in Groom Lake. I have no idea how he made it out alive, but I'd like to know more. September 22nd, 1994. So all these 94 files now knowing that Day Mary 1994 was the prequel has me like very interested into jumping into that one. September 22nd, 94. Hayden, what an extraordinary man, even in face of the difficulties he's endured. Somehow, I got him to open up about his past again and discovered that his wife left years ago because she couldn't bear the white of his job. She even left him to take care of their only daughter, baby Samantha. I really feel some kind of connection to this man. So much so, in fact, that I'm feeling exactly what I'm feeling for Sam. How I'm going to deal with this, only time will tell. I should probably just concentrate on my work. Yeah, it'd probably be for the best. August 15th, 1996. I thought I could handle it. Instead, I wish I'd never gotten involved in this pile of poo. I've been working on the Truman Project for the company now for four years, but it looks like this isn't going to end the way I thought it would. We didn't come here to improve people's lives. We came here to test weapons of mass destruction. If that weren't bad enough, even though we've signed away our lives to these hexacore bastards with their government backing, they still won't lift a finger to help us. Any of us. Hayden told me his daughter contracted a terrible disease and requires an experimental treatment that the company just won't cover. That's why he's been so distant these past few months. I want to do something to help. I've always, I'll always feel close to him forever. In the meantime, at least some good news came from all this. Sam asked me to marry him, a beacon of hope in all the darkness that surrounds me. A reminder that there are more important things in life. Now I know who my heart belongs to, and I need to devote my life to him. I need to do my job as effectively as possible to make him feel better. March 20, 1997. 
I don't want to believe it, but Hayden asked me to meet him just outside town to reveal a scheme. There isn't much time left to save his daughter, and the only way he can do it is by connecting, by committing an act so utterly despicable it borders on nefarious. It seems that Curran also, an international pharmaceutical company, made it to deal with Hayden to save his daughter in exchange for the destruction of hundreds, if not thousands, of lives, along with Hexacore as a whole. Worse still, it'll bring our government to its knees by revealing the truth about experiments on the American people that have been ongoing for decades. He must have lost it, completely freaked out. Nothing, not even loss of a loved one, can justify such a stupid and reckless decision. I'm pretty sure those bastards are using him. I just don't understand why the hell he doesn't see it. I need to talk some sense into him. I'm sure those are just the words of a desperate father, but if he doesn't listen to reason, I'll have to I'll have no choice but to report him in the company's internal affairs department, though I don't know if I could live with what that'd do to him. So that was her computer in the lab with the email that wasn't sent. July 14th, 1997. Hayden left the base and took a few days leave. Sadly, his daughter Samantha didn't make it. Her little heart gave out just two days ago. I feel sorry for him, but this could be a blessing in disguise. Now he won't have any reason to enact that nefarious scheme of his. From what I gather, he's got a long journey to the medical center where she was being treated. Though I'm sure he'll come back soon, and when he does, I'll be there to support him in whatever way possible. There you have it. So, what's in the tube? Is that his daughter? So they're gonna have to do a Daymare sequel now that they've done a prequel. Cause that was clearly that dude's daughter. So normal mode, B rank, pretty common for my first run on stuff like this. Time was long. Number of deaths, I would say, of those, I had a solid no death run going. Uh, a good majority of those were probably in chapter four and five. I'd say probably 23 of them, <laughs> especially at the end of the game. That was brutal. Well. I don't know what's next after I hit X, but I will say, again, I appreciate the likes, the subs, the views. Thank you so much. And thank you to the developers for making this game. It's been quite enjoyable. And, you know, I look forward to uh, what I start up next and when I start Daymare 1994. And I hope you will join me for that when we get there. So I'm Seabash31. And as always, stay safe out there.